The unconscious has two layers, the upper being closest to our conscious personality and holds all the experiential errata from our daily lives, starting with the moment of our birth. These experiences and thoughts are curated into our conscious personality, not immediately apparent, but in constant communication with our conscious mind, should we choose to pay attention to it. But no matter what happens in our lives, this personality dies with the body at death. Also, there is a deeper layer to the unconscious that Jung notes holds the archetypes of our culture, and Crowley is shown to hold such preternatural beings that inform our individual development from life to life. Chief among these has been called the Augiades, or Holy Guardian Angel. This has been referred to by Blavatsky as our starry nature and is shown to us even in our early childhood by the natural talents and intelligence that proliferates and that we almost immediately exhibit. Such motives show themselves through the choices we make and the things that fascinate us. It is as if we become obsessed with certain things practicing a musical instrument, studying history or anatomy or geology, and of course there's the mystical and the religious calling. These are just a few careers of a much larger list. That a younger soul, more recently emerged from the consciousness of Mother Earth, may not exhibit a top-end genius is easily qualified. There's just not enough lifetimes yet lived to demonstrate but such a remarkable character in performance in this life. But older souls seem even to be prodigies and become accomplished with such ease as to be uncanny. It's even that some souls seem to appear on certain cusps in human history as to develop a pattern of expression that continues from life to life. Crowley, claiming to be the reincarnation of Eliphas Levy, marks for us two lives where a significant advance in the Western mystery tradition is performed. General Patton, claiming to be at the battle fought between the emergent Roman, Roman Empire and the Carthaginians, as he was also at World War II in the European theater of the American Empire in its emergence, is another example. Thus, these two stars have a certain qualia that innately draws them to situations imbued with a seeming destiny by way of forethought. It is as if there's a teleological force that places them in the right incarnation at the right moment in history. In occultism, the Adeptus Exemptus comes to develop the capacity to explore this substrate, substrate and recall the memory of these past lives. It is this that gives him or her the experience and authority to, to develop an erstwhile plan for the care of humanity. Moving forward in its evolution. As G.W.F. Hegel points out in his philosophical system, it is the teleological force of the divine that becomes through human history, and it is human history that converts the human race with the divine, or we should say connects the human race with the divine. Thus, it is the archetypal realm that sets up the field markers by which the human drama is shaped and made manifest. And the teleological forces developed in this substrate, where dwells the beings called the secret chiefs. Akin to the Adeptus Exemptus, who is yet to face the final ordeal, proving him or her a master of the temple, the secret chiefs are that body of masters. The star that is said to be cast into the heavens on his or her attainment is that very Augiades encountered on the initiation of the Adeptus Minor. Here it is that the true will is developed into that work of beauty that proves the virtue of his or her augiates and sets his or her nature onto the human field of play. And it is the success of the master of the temple that assures his.